All right. Well, for more on the crypto fallout, we welcome in Stephen McClurg, Valkyrie Investments Chief Investment Officer. So obviously we're seeing crypto rallying today, getting a, a brief reprieve based on that, on that better than expected CPI report. But where are we in terms of the fallout from this? Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, really right now where we are is uh, we're in the second leg of, uh, of the bottom, so to speak. We, we hit the first leg in the summer after we had uh, the deleveraging after Celsius Voyager block fi uh, from the spring. Uh, this is the second leg where we have further fallout from FTX. And what, what we believe is happening is, you know, FTX tried to bail out Voyager and others because uh, they were tied into it in some way. Um, you know, it was very tough for us to understand uh, how FTX and Alameda were, were related. Uh, we thought it was possible that uh, Alameda was essentially a prop shop in the background for FTX International, you know, trying to earn additional income. So, you know, we've avoided uh, utilizing FTX as a, as a counterparty, um, as we did with Celsius and Voyager. But, uh, but the third leg is still to come. So, so we have a nice little reprieve right here. But the third leg really is going to be some of the fund managers that have used FTX as their um, counterparty for custody and holding assets. Um, if, if I were, you know, for instance, uh, in, a, in a fund that had a large amount of assets on FTX and got the news that, that, that I, I'd probably be redeeming right now, and I'm sure a lot of other people will redeem. And once those redemptions hit those funds and those funds start having to sell off, that's probably going to be the third and last leg of this sell off. Uh, but at the moment, we're at the bottom and um, and we are getting a bit, a bit of a reprieve from macro markets as well. Stephen, you mentioned some concerns there about uh, FTX. I guess to you, what was the red flag? What did you notice that I guess others in the industry didn't exactly see months ago? Yeah, you know, anytime that we work with a counterparty, uh, we try to evaluate the risk of that counterparty. So whether we're looking at Coinbase or Gemini or or, or Kraken or some other platform, uh, we're looking, we do due diligence on the security of that platform. And we also wanna understand what are they doing with their custodied assets? Um, in the case of, of FTX or Celsius, we never really got a clear understanding of what was happening in the back end with those assets. You know, In some cases, they're, they have a product where they're delivering yield. Well, where does the yield come from? And uh, you know, there's there's been a, been a saying for the last year: if uh, if you don't understand the yield, you're probably the yield. So uh, when you don't understand risk, you can't take a risk. So uh, we've we we've, we've avoided taking risks that we don't understand. And as you mentioned, obviously being near the bottom at the moment, what's the best and waste, worst case scenario right now? Not just for the crypto industry, but all of these retail investors who are stuck in the middle here. Yeah, unfortunately, I think a lot of their funds are going to be lost. Um, I really applaud people like Justin Sun, who is coming on and, and offering ways of getting people uh, their, their their tokens off the exchange and by supplying some kind of collateral there. I don't understand exactly how that's working. I haven't dug into that yet. But uh, the fact that they're coming out and they're and they're really trying to help, um, you know, people in the ecosystem is is absolutely fantastic. But uh, there's a lot of other people that are going to get hurt. Uh, in this, right? Um, you know, there's there's the difference between FTX International, FTX US. Uh, a lot of people were moving their money from the US into FTX International and trading over there. So, uh, you know, we first of all, it's kind of hard to understand how they were even able to do that because uh, you you'd probably have to go to VPNs and 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 work around the system, and it was it's probably even harder to understand why FTX would accept those deposits. Uh, but 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 they did, um, and then and then secondly, it's you know it's a it's a big risk that you're taking, uh, and it's unfortunate that uh, retail investors are are getting hosed in this. And Stephen, there's also of course the worry out there that this could also signal that maybe similar types of uh, collapses could happen in the crypto markets when it comes to some of those larger players. Are you at all worried about that? Yeah, I mean that's 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 really the thing that I'm worried about the most right now. Uh, this this does seem to be the last leg of deleveraging. First of all, so uh, there's there's not a whole lot more leverage in the system at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think for the most part, people are, people are out. Right. Uh, the, the 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 third and final leg uh, after after all this deleveraging has happened is some of those funds. Um, you know, is some of those fund managers that had deposits on FTX they're not getting back, 
and they're probably going to have to unwind their funds or, or a portion of their funds in some way. So uh, that that will be the you know likely the final sell off here. Uh, but, uh, but but that being said, I, I, I do think that we're we're at the bottom. Uh, when you're at the bottom, it doesn't mean you can't go lower. But um, uh, we are at the bottom, and we'll probably retest those lows a third time before uh, before we rally. And what does this mean for the future of exchanges? Is it just going to be this idea of just hold on to your own keys, have your own hard wallet? Uh, does this make people just lose faith in exchanges overall? You know, I don't I don't think so. There are a lot of good legitimate exchanges out there. There's also a lot of good legitimate custody solutions out there. Uh, I think people are going to be more cautious about where they go. Um, you know, just like us, you know, we we evaluate every every counterparty we work with. So there are trusted exchanges. Um, you know, for the most part, we trust uh, Kraken, Coinbase, Gemini, a um, couple of others. Um, and then you also have other players that are coming into the ecosystem. And there was a big announcement a month ago that Bank of New York is going to start custodying Bitcoin and Ethereum. So, you know, if you're if you're a fund manager, uh, why wouldn't you hold some of your Bitcoin with a trusted custodian that trusts, you know, that 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 custodies trillions of dollars in assets? Uh, so, uh, so that really is the future, in, in my opinion. The uh, the players like Kraken and, and Coinbase and Gemini, who have been trying to do the right thing all along, who've been playing ball, who operated within the U.S., operated within uh, you know current regulations, uh, as well as some of the uh, you know the newer players that are that are old players and track on. Certainly, a lot to untangle here. We do appreciate you joining us, Stephen McClurg. Thank you so much.